assalamu alaikum and good evening everyone we have ended the half of the may june 2023 paper 11 one, one. now we are going to complete the rest of the half today question number 21 which two oxides will both react with aqueous sodium hydroxide so aqueous sodium hydroxide is itself an alkali so with an alkali an acidic oxide with or amphoteric oxide would react. So you must remember the which ones are amphoteric and which one are acidic oxides. Is this understandable to all of you? Okay. So calcium oxide and copper two oxides both are basic oxides. So these two are not going to react with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So A is wrong. Okay, is enough. Calcium oxide and zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is amphoteric, so it would react, but calcium oxide is basic. So B option is also wrong. Copper 2 oxide and sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is acidic, but copper 2 oxide is basic. So only one of the oxide would react. So C goes wrong. It means that B is our correct answer. Here you see it's a acidic oxide, sulfur dioxide, and zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide, and both would react with sodium hydroxide. Yes, very good, Zainab. It's D. Now, Question number 22. A solution of sodium carbonate is added to a tap water. White precipitates are formed. Okay. So we know that all of the sodium salts are insoluble, right? So it's a sodium carbonate. When it's mixed in tap water, we obviously get some carbonate and here that carbonate has some element, some metal with it, and that is water insoluble, which ion is present in the water, which causes the precipitates to form. So it must be a positively charged ion. So because sodium would not form any, you know, uh, precipitate. So A chloride is wrong, and B sulfate is wrong. Very good. yes, Rahim. Very good. So see, these, these two are the negative ions and negative ions joins with that group with sodium. So they won't react. Okay. Oh, they won't form the precipitate. Now we are left with the... See, this is a chloride ion and this is a sulfate ion. Both are negative ions. So these two are going to bond with the sodium ion, right? And sodium is in group one. So all group one are water soluble. So sodium chloride and sodium sulfate both would not form precipitate. Is this clear, Shayan? Okay, now we are left with the carbonate ion. Here is a sodium and this is a carbonate ion. So with the carbonate ion, as carbonate ion is a negative ion, so the positive ion would react. So it forms magnesium carbonate and potassium carbonate. So again, potassium carbonate, potassium is a group one salt. So potassium is from group one, so potassium carbonate is going to be soluble. So it would not form precipitate as well. So C goes wrong as well. And B is the correct answer. Very good, Rahim. Okay, now question number 23. I hope it's clear to all of you. Now question number 23. The characteristic properties of elements changes from left to right across period two of the periodic table. Okay. On the left of the period, the chart on the ions formed by the element is same as the group number. Yes, if you see the periodic table, see the group number is one. The chart is positive when the group number is two the charge is positive two though so on the left we are observing this thing yeah and charge is negative no the charge is positive on the left of the period right so if you see statement one is wrong and the statement two is correct so one only is going to be considered as correct a c and d goes wrong and b is the correct answer is this understandable to all of you Okay. Now question number 24, which statement about group seven halogens is correct? Okay. Bromine consists of Br2 molecules at room temperature and pressure. Yes, it is correct. But let's check the rest of the one. They didn't talk about state. So yeah, bromine is a Br2 molecule. 
iodine displaces bromine solution of potassium bromide not possible because bromine is above and iodine is below so iodine cannot displace bromide so d goes wrong the halogen becomes darker in color as the relative molecular mass decreases again wrong because not decrease on because on molecular on increasing the molecular mass that halogen's color becomes darker now the halogen becomes more volatile as the relative molecular mass increases again this is wrong as you can say the halogen becomes more volatile as the relative molecular mass decreases because see fluorine and chlorine have a lesser molecular mass they are gases bromine is a liquid its molecular mass is greater and iodine has a greater even more greater than uh, bromine its molecular mass and its solid so so volatility is decreasing not increasing volatility is decreasing when the mr is increasing and if the mr is increasing then the volatility is increasing so d goes wrong as well in this case a is the correct answer okay now question number 25 a power cable requires an element that conducts electricity has a relatively low density and is ductile which of these properties does aluminium have aluminium conducts electricity yeah aluminium has a relatively low density and aluminium is ductile as well right so aluminium has all three properties so b c and d goes wrong and a is the correct answer is this clear to all of you Question number 26, which diagram represents the structure of an alloy? So I think it's very clear to all of you that B is the correct structure of the alloy. So B is the correct answer. A is of core metal, or you can say just a solid. C is a diamond and D is a graphite and B is an alloy. A is a solid or metal, okay? Now, question number 27. Most metals react with oxygen in the air to form a metal oxide. Which metal forms an oxide here that reduces its apparent reactivity? So that is aluminum A. Very good, Zena. So it's aluminium. So B, C, and D goes wrong. And A is the correct answer. Yes, very good, Khadija. Is this clear to all of you? Now, question number 28. Which statement about corrosion of metal is correct? A barrier method is needed to prevent the corrosion of a stainless steel. Did you guys study the barrier method over here in, in O levels? No? So A goes wrong. Iron corrodes to produce hydrated iron 1 oxide. No, it produces hydrated, but iron 3 oxide is the correct name. Iron oxide is the correct name, so B is wrong. Sacrificial protection uses a less reactive no. Sacrificial protection is a more reactive metal attached to a metal object that is the so C is wrong because whenever we have to do the sacrificial protection, we have to connect or attach a more reactive metal to the object which we want to protect. So it means we are left with D. So D is the correct answer. When corrosion occurs, the metal loses electrons to become positive. And yes, that's what happens in the corrosion. Iron is a metal, its oxidation number is zero when it's gets rested, it gets corroded, its oxidation number changes to plus three, right? Okay, now question number 29. Some metals and compounds in their ores are shown. Okay. Which type of reaction occurs in the extraction of each of these metals from its oxide? Okay. Which type of reaction occurs? If you see, that is a little tricky question, but if you see, here aluminium is plus 3, here calcium is plus 2, here lead is plus 2, here sodium is plus 1, 
Here iron is plus three. Here magnesium is plus two. When they get extracted, it becomes aluminium. It becomes calcium. It becomes lead. It becomes sodium. It becomes iron, and it becomes magnesium. So see, all of them, you know, their oxidation number is decreasing. So it means all of them undergoing reduction. So it means B is the correct answer. A, B, and C goes wrong, and B is our answer. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now question number 30. Which statement about natural sources of water and domestic water supply is correct? Okay. Chlorine is used to remove taste and odors. No, chlorine is used to kill the bacteria. Metal compounds from detergents can be deoxygenated. Natural sources of water, not metal compound, basically nitrates and phosphates from detergents. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do this. So B statement is wrong as well. Photosynthesis provides the oxygen needed for aquatic life in the natural source of water. Yes, this can be correct. Sedimentation removes nitrates. Nitrates are water soluble. So how the sedimentation can remove, uh, you know, nitrates. So D goes wrong. So we are left with only option C. So option C is correct one. Is this clear to all of you? Because from detergents, from cyan, from detergents, phosphates are the ones which deoxygenate the natural source of water, not the metal compounds. Because metal compound can be metal carbonate or metal sulfate or metal chloride, but all of them does not deoxygenate. Only if the nitrate ions are there and the phosphate ions are there, they are going to deoxygenate water. So you have to specific about metal compounds containing nitrates or phosphate and phosphates from detergents can deoxygenate natural source of water. Is this clear? Now question number 31. Guesses that may be present in air are listed. Okay. Neon, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, methane. Which gas are atmospheric pollutants? So carbon monoxide is atmospheric pollutant and methane is ex uh, atmospheric pollutant. So it means two and four. So which means C is the correct answer. So A, B and D goes wrong. Okay, very good, Shayan and Fatija. So C is the correct answer. Now, question number 32. Which compounds are in the same homologous series? Okay, so if you see It is, first one is, I am writing the formula in the sequence, C4H10. If you look at the second one, it is C4H8. So C, different homologous series, so B go, A goes wrong. Is this clear? Now, if you see it is C3H6, if you see this C4H8, and if you see this C4H8, so see, all of them are following same general formula C and H2N. So, yes, all belongs to same homologous series, so B is the correct one. See, this one and this one are in the same homologous series, but this one is an acid which makes C wrong. And over here, see, due to this, it is C and H2N. And if you work on these, you will find they are C and H2N plus 2. So D goes wrong as well. And B is the confirmed correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Now, question number 33, the diagram shows four structures of C4H8. Which structure represents the same molecule? So, if you see, if you see this one is U1E, 
And if you see, this one is viewed to E. So these two are the different ones. Right? Now, if you see this one is a branch, and this one is a branch, and if you see, both are exactly the same because carbon number one has a double bond. Then there is a carbon number two. This is the chain like this. And this is the branch. And over here, this is the branch. So three carbon in a chain. First carbon has a double bond and the second carbon has a branch. So the correct answer is two and four. So D is correct. A, B, and C goes wrong, and D is our correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Now, question number 34. The displayed formula of two organic compounds are shown. Okay. One is, this one is alcohol, methanol, and this one is ester which is ethyl methanoid. So that's what they are asking, methyl, methyl, ethanoid. And methanoic acid. So we are left with the correct C. So C is our correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Now, question number 35. Two products of the separation of petroleum are lubricating oil fraction and kerosene paraffin fraction. Which statement is correct? Lubricating oil is more viscous than kerosene fraction. Yes, because if you see, you will get lubricating oil over here and kerosene above. So the one above is less viscous and the one which is got at the bottom is more viscous. So A seems correct. Lubricating oil is more volatile. No, it has a more higher boiling point. B is wrong. Lubricating oil has a lower boiling point. No, again, I have told you that its boiling point is higher. Molecules in lubricating oil have a smaller chain. No, they have a larger chain. So yes, A is correct answer. Is this clear? So this is the memory based question. You have to remember these things. Now question number 36. An incomplete equation for the reaction of propane with chlorine is shown. Okay. A student writes three statements about the reaction. The equation energy for the reaction is provided by ultraviolet right. Yes, we know that it requires sunlight or ultraviolet right. This has two different structural formula. Yes, this is correct because see, if you see there are three carbon atoms. So when chlorine gets substituted, so there is a possibility that either chlorine gets substituted or carbon number one, or it can be substituted at carbon number two. So you will get a one chloropropane or a two chloropropane. X is an acidic gas. Yes, X is XCl. So it's an acidic gas. So all three statements are correct, right? So A is correct, B, C, and D goes wrong. And A is the correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Now, question number 37. Glycerol is an alcohol with three OH groups per molecule. As you see, each carbon 1, 2, and 3 all have OH group. When we use usually HCl is a liquid and when there is an aqueous solution and you are getting HCl, then HCl is a liquid and this organic HCl is always formed as a gas. When a halogen is reacting, a chlorine is reacting with the organic molecules, okay? What is the equation for the combustion of glycerol? Okay, let's have a look. How many carbons we have? Three. How many hydrogens we have? Six, seven, eight. And how many oxygens we have? Three. Now it is reacting with the oxygen, forming three moles of carbon dioxide 
and eight hydrogen are there, so four moles of water. Is this understandable to all of you? So if you see six oxygen over here and four oxygen over here, right? So six plus four gives me 10 oxygens. So out of 10, I have a three oxygen over here. So to get the remaining seven oxygen, I need to put seven over two. So here there is a whole seven and these are the two moles. So if you multiply two, this equation with the two, so two, this two dots can see with the two and two times three makes it six and two times four makes it eight. So yes, C is the correct equation. Very good, Rahim. So A, B and D goes wrong and C is the correct answer. Is this clear to all of you? Now it becomes 12. It becomes eight and it becomes 20. And if you see 14 and two times three makes it six. So 20 over here. So the whole equation is balanced. Is this clear to all of you? If anyone of you has any confusion, please ask. Okay, now question number 38. Compound X decolorizes acidified potassium magnate. So it means it's a reducing agent. Compound X is the empirical formula of C2H5O. And another thing, if we talk about organic, so X can be an alcohol. That is the empirical formula. Which possible is structure shows it is X. So it's C2H5O. Oh, right. So if it's two H five O, so it cannot be one. And it's a carboxylic acid. Carboxylic acid doesn't react with acidified KMnO four, so D goes wrong as well. So if you see one only, and four goes wrong, it contains one. So A is wrong on. So you are left with only option C. So e, C is the correct answer. And if you work on it, you will find C. How many carbons we have? Four. If you count the hydrogens, eight, nine, ten. And how many oxygens you have? If you simplify it, you will get C2H5O. So yes, it's correct. Now look over here. It is also C4H10O2. And if you simplify it, you will also get C2H5O. Is this clear to all of you? Okay. Now, question number 39. Yes, Khatija, what is the confusion over here? See, they have told you the empirical formula is C2H5. So if you work on it, it's empirical formula is C2. If you see, it is C2H6O. So that is its empirical formula as well. So it first goes wrong. Is this clear, Khatija? So if first goes wrong, then A and B could not be answered because both contains one. Is this clear? Now they say our first statement is telling us that aqueous potassium magnate decolorizes by X. So it means X must be alcohol because carboxylic acid doesn't react with the acidified potassium magnate. So D4 goes wrong and it contains 4. So D goes wrong as well. We have already excluded A and B and now we have excluded D as well. So we are only left with C option. Is this clear? Okay, now question number 39. Which statement is correct? A filtrate is left on the filter paper. No, a filtrate is which passed through the filter paper, right? 
A saturated solution contains only substance with a single bond. No, a saturated solution contains maximum capacity of solute in it. So B goes wrong as well. A solute is a substance that dissolves the solvent. No, a solute is a substance that is dissolved in a solvent. So C goes wrong. It means D is our correct answer. A solution can never be described as pure. Yes, it's always a mixture. It is. It has more two or more than two substances in it. Is this clear to all of you? Now question number 40. They are not talking about saturated compound. They are talking about saturated solutions. These are two different things. Saturated compounds are inorganic, which means that they there is a single bond between carbon and hydrogen and carbon and carbon. Saturated with organic compounds are saturated. And we call those compounds saturated, which has only this a single bond between carbon atoms. They are talking about saturated solution. Open the notes of experimental chemistry, where you will find the definition of a saturated solution that it contains a maximum capacity of solute in it. Is it clear, Shyam? So saturated compound and saturated solution are two different things. Now question number 40. A student does two experiments. In experiment one, ammonium carbonate is reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay. So ammonium carbonate HCl forms ammonium chloride, CO2, and water. I am not balancing it. Ammonium carbonate is heated with sodium hydroxide. So ammonium carbonate when heated with an alkali, if you guys recall, salt is formed. Sodium carbonate water and ammonia gas degrades. In each experiment, the gas evolved is tested with damp lead, red litmus paper and damp, damp blue litmus paper and damp red litmus paper. Okay, here there is a carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide is an acidic. Okay, so in experiment one, which draw correctly shows the color of the both pieces of litmus at the end of each experiment. Okay. So what happens here? A carbon dioxide is being released. So it turns damp red litmus blue because it's an acidic gas. So acidic gas turns blue litmus red. Damp blue litmus red. And this red stays red. And over here, ammonia is releasing. And ammonia is a, you know, basic gas. So it turns damp red litmus blue over here. And blue litmus stays blue. Is this understandable to all of you? Because it's a basic gas and it's an acidic gas. So in experiment one, both the litmus has red color and in experiment two, both the litmus has blue color. So C is the correct option. And A, B and D are wrong. Is this clear to all of you? So here we have ended the whole paper. Okay. Uh, 